When watching the latest MotoGP race on your tablet, it might be difficult to grasp that spectators of the 1907 Isle of Man TT were equally excited as you when watching so-called touring motorcycles swoosh by at 38 miles per hour. So to enlighten younger generations and maybe make older generations a bit nostalgic, I created this documentary on motorcycle racing. As far as I've been able to find, a documentary covering the full history of motorcycle racing has never been made before. In 1885, engineer Gottlieb Daimler and engine designer Wilhelm Maybach created what was arguably the first internal combustion engine motorcycle, called the Daimler Petroleum Reitwagen, or riding car in English. The original design had a belt drive and a twist grip on the handlebars, which was used to both apply power by twisting the grip one way and engine brake by twisting the grip the other way. Both combustion engine and manufacturing technology developed fast, and in 1894 two steam engine engineers named Heinrich and Wilhelm Hildebrand teamed up with inventor Alois Wolfmiller to create the world's first production motorcycle, called the Hildebrand and Wolfmiller. This was also the first invention to actually be called a motorcycle or Motorrad in German. The term also explains the thought behind the invention. Take a motor and attach it to a bicycle. Voila, motorcycle. Because it was so simple to assemble your own motorcycle, their popularity grew exponentially across the globe. And in 1896, Excelsior Motor Company of Warwickshire, England, began production of their first motorcycle available to the public. Just two years later, in 1898, the first production motorcycle in the US was built by Charles Metz from his factory in Walton, Massachusetts. That same year, Peugeot Motorcycles presented their first motorcycle at the Paris Motor Show. France was also the place where the first documented and official motorcycle races were held. The development of motorcycle racing largely coincided with the development of car sports, with a class for motorcycles in so-called reliability motor contests or town-to-town -town road races. These types of races would soon be run in the US, Australia and across Europe. The town-to-town -town events were often epic in scale, such as the 1902 Paris to Vienna race, with 60 controls as well as flagmen throughout the 559 mile track. The town-to-town -to -town races shared a lot of elements with modern-day motorsports, such as rally raid, endurance racing, enduro, and road racing. In 1901, English bicycle maker Royal Enfield introduced its first motorcycle, with a 239cc engine mounted up front. Triumph and Norton introduced their first motorcycles in 1902 to compete with Royal Enfield, as well as Peugeot. Over on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, in 1901, Oscar Hedström and George M. Handy started the Indian Company. The first motorcycle that Oscar and George made was the Indian Single, with 1.75 horsepower. Racers soon found out that these motorcycles were very suitable for racing because of their light weight and relatively high power output. But they would soon get challenged. That same year, William S. Harley and his childhood friend Arthur Davidson realized their first prototype motorcycle, which they called the Harley Davidson. They updated this prototype several times, with the final version having a 405cc engine and a loop frame. The first recorded run with this motorcycle is from 1904, where Edward Hildebrand placed fourth in the races at Milwaukee State Fair Park. Now this race was most likely held around the repurposed horse racing oval. And you guessed it, this was the beginnings of long track, flat track and speedway. Up until 1902, motorcycles were not very successful against cars and tricycles. But this would change with the Werner Brothers Motobicyclette, 
made by Michel and Eugene Werner in Paris. It had a 216cc four-stroke single-cylinder engine and pedals. In fact, one of the first ever speeding tickets given to a motorcyclist was given to a rider on a Werner's Brothers bike. The ticket was made out to Alfred Nipper on the 13th of September 1902. The officer wrote, Then being the driver of a certain carriage, to wit a motorcycle, on a certain highway there situate called Bristol Road, unlawfully did ride the same furiously thereon, so as then to endanger the lives and limbs of passengers on the said highway. Mr. Nipper was fined seven shilling for his motoring offense. As the motorcycle industry grew across the globe, more people got access to motorcycles, which led to town races being arranged by locals wanting to put their own and their assembled motorcycles' abilities to the test. Eventually, it all went out of control, since races were staged over long stretches of regular roads, which wasn't always shut down for the event. This turned out to be very dangerous, so dangerous in fact that European governments decided to collectively ban town-to-town -to -town racing after the 1903 Paris to Madrid event, which left three spectators and five racers dead. Soon similar measures were taken in Australia and the US, but the public was still hungry for more motorcycle racing, which made entrepreneurs and organizers look for alternative forms of racing. One entrepreneur in the UK, Hugh F. Locke King, had the brilliant idea to build a purpose-built motor racing circuit, which he called Brooklyn's Racetrack. Brooklyn's opened in 1907 and was built with uncoated concrete, because of the expenses of laying asphalt at the time. This led to a rather bumpy and dangerous ride, but nevertheless, motorcycle racing started at Brooklyn's in 1908 and the British Motorcycle Racing Club known as BEMC was founded in 1909 around the Brooklyn's track. Indianapolis businessman Carl G. Fisher had been involved in automobile racing in France and had noticed how dangerous racing on roads could be. He then went to Brooklyn's racetrack and got inspired by its bank layout. Fisher then took the idea back to Indiana and had Indianapolis Motor Speedway constructed in 1909. The track surface consisted of graded and packed soil covered by toroid and a final topping of crushed stone. The first motorsport event at the track consisted of motorcycle races sanctioned by the Federation of American Motorcyclists FAM. The event at Indianapolis was originally planned as a two-day 15-race program, but unsurprisingly ended before the first day was completed, because of concerns over suitability of the toroid-covered track surface for motorcycle use. This led to the idea to use wood just as used in bicycle velodromes in Australia and Europe at the time. The first so-called motor dome, built from 2x2 and 2x4 lumber, was set up in Los Angeles. The sport called board track racing had been born. Indian dominated the sport initially, but they soon got challenged by Harley Davidson. Which started an official racing department with William Ottaway as his first assistant engineer, reporting directly to William S. Harley, who formed a team that became so successful that they got known as the Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew included racers such as Freddie Ludlow, Ralph Hepburn, Albert Shrimp Burns, Otto Walker, Leslie Parkhurst, Joe Walters, Maldwin Jones, and Ray Weishar. Weishar helped popularize the nickname Hog in reference to Harley Davidson by carrying the team's mascot, a small pig, around on victory laps. The bikes used for board track racing were faster than you can imagine. For instance, this bike only has 7 horsepower, but it can still reach 90 miles per hour. Now think about that, riding at 90 miles per hour on a wooden track. Now that's Daredevils right there. The emphasis of the sport was on raw speed, with spectators as close to the action as possible. Board track racing grew exponentially in popularity, and was a very popular spectator sport from around 1909 into the 1920s in the US. Now unfortunately, the construction of the motor domes hadn't been made with safety in mind, and crashes were quite frequent and horrific. Racers often slammed into the crowd when they crashed. On one particularly lethal day in 1912, between four and six spectators were killed along with Eddie Hasha and another rider in Newark, New Jersey. 
These types of crashes led to the press calling the motor domes murder domes. Because of the frequent accidents, the criticism by the press and the depression, American board track racing died out in the 1930s. Racing on closed down roads was still a viable option, but the races needed to be organized with regulations and at least some safety in mind. One of these forms of racing was started on September 25, 1904, when the Motorcycle Club de France organized the first official international road race in Dourdan, southwest of Paris, including five nations, Austria, Denmark, France, Germany and Great Britain. The race was held around a roughly 33 mile marked out course, which would be rounded five times. Disputes arose of the racing conditions of this event. So the organizers decided to create the Federation Internationale des Clubs Motorcyclistes, or FICM, in 1904 to be the global sanctioning body of motorcycle racing. Unfortunately, this did not stop more controversies from happening, with accusations of cheating and unclear rules in races following. So in 1906, on their way home from a race held in Austria, Freddie Strait, secretary of the Autocycle Club in Britain, Charlie and Harry Collier from Matchless Motorcycles discussed arranging a motorcycle race on the same Isle of Man course being used for car races. The plan developed and it was decided that the race would have two classes, one for single cylinder machines and one for twin cylinder machines. The organizers wanted the motorcycles to be close to road going vehicles so that the race would be accessible to anyone who would like to participate. So they introduced regulations for saddles, pedals, mud guards and exhaust silencers. And so, on the 28th of May 1907, the first Isle of Man Tourist Trophy was held. The race was run in a time trial format, held around what is now known as the St. John's Short Course for 10 laps. The twin cylinder class was won by Rem Fowler on a 5 horsepower Norton motorcycle with a Peugeot engine and an average speed of 36.21 miles per hour. Fowler nearly gave up during the race, as he suffered a number of problems with drive belts and spark plugs. He even crashed at nearly 60 miles per hour due to a tire burst at the devil's elbow. Upon getting up from the accident, a spectator told him that he led the class by 30 minutes, and so he decided to continue and ultimately won the race. Due to all the controversies, the FICM was inactive from 1906 until 1912. But in 1912, it was reborn with 10 countries involved. The first event held by the new FICM was the Six Days International Reliability Trial. Back in those days, it was run on what was considered to be regular roads. These days, these same roads would be considered to be truly off-road. These days, this event is called the International Six Days Enduro, so it was essentially the first cross-country or rally raid form of racing. Another type of racing was the Scottish Six Days Trial, which had been running since 1909. It is still running to this day and has the same name. This form of competition is today called Motorcycle Trials, which runs over hazard-strewn terrain divided into observed sections. In 1911, Isle of Man TT transferred to the Snaefell Mountain Course with a 350cc Junior TT and a 500cc Senior TT. The organization around the event had become more professional and grandstands were built for spectators. The new course had a, at the time, challenging 8 mile uphill climb that forced manufacturers to devise methods to get their low horsepower machines up the hill. The first, second and third manufacturer standings in the 500cc race went to American manufacturer Indian, denting British pride and prestige from having dominated road racing for some time. The Indian riders were AJ Moorhouse, CB Franklin and Oliver Godfrey who won the race. Another form of organized racing conducted at the time was land speed racing, with a very simple goal, trying to achieve the highest average speed over a set distance, given a set number of runs. Land speed racing was very popular in the US, with one particularly famous racer being Glenn Curtis. Curtis built his own motorcycles to set speed records, his most famous being a 4410cc V8 engine powered motorcycle. On January 24, 1907, he set the unofficial land speed record of 136.36 miles per hour at Ormond Beach, Florida. 
This not only made him the fastest motorcyclist in the world, but the fastest person on earth in any motorized vehicle at the time. Another form of organized racing during the time was hill climbing, where riders compete against the clock to complete an uphill course. There are documents of hill climb races as early as 1897 in La Trubie near Nice, France. This type of hill climbing went over a long stretch of either paved or dirt roads, with the racer reaching the top in the shortest amount of time being declared the winner. This type of racing got popular in the US as well, with Mount Washington Hill Climb Auto Race being the first event in the country in 1904. Another such event was Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, still running to this day. Oftentimes the organizers of the hill climb events also arrange for stunt riders to come and perform various daring maneuvers for the spectators, and so the sport of stunt riding had been born. During this same time someone got the brilliant idea to arrange hill climbs at very steep off-road hills. Initially the motorcycles used for these competitions were relatively unmodified road-going motorcycles. Racers would start to modify them by lowering them, adding chains on the back wheel for maximum traction. Nations weren't just competing on the racetrack, but unfortunately geopolitically as well. And in July of 1914, World War I broke out. During the war, Harley-Davidson greatly ramped up their production of motorcycles to support the war effort. Messengers on horses were replaced by dispatch riders on motorcycles, carrying messages, performing recognizance and acting as military police. All the previous racing, and now the war, put pressure on the manufacturers to improve their technology rapidly. This led to the first motorcycle which did not have pedals, the 1915 Triumph Type H. It had a 550cc side valve four-stroke engine, with a three-speed gearbox and belt transmission. This is considered by many to be the first modern motorcycle. Many soldiers saw their first motorcycles during the war, and would take up motorcycling as a hobby after the war was over. Motorcycle racing was here to stay. Based on the advice that I got from some friends, I decided to make this documentary into a five-part series. The second part is going to cover the basic technology that was invented in the late 1800s, moving all the way up until World War II. Now, thank you guys for watching, and as always, see you next time!